Hi everyone, this is Consel here. Now I know I promised that I'll be doing the uh, Shenhe and Yunji videos this week. But I wanted to round things up with Albedo first because we now know with the release of 2.3 and being able to actually test out 4 piece husks, how the match stats work and how the off field stacking work. We now know that the off field stats can be gained just by simply off field without dueling any dual damage. Which means you can effectively wait 12 seconds before you start any combat or any challenge. Okay? So I am going to update all my rotations and my math based on the fact that we already start with 4 piece has uh, math stats, which is 4 stats. Okay? So the biggest update would really be to the rotation, and I'll talk about that. I'll talk a bit about how the change to the rotation impacts the weapon figure, the weapon summary in terms of the damage figures for Albedo only, Albedo plus C0 R1 Ito and Albedo plus C6 R5 Ito. And I'll just talk quickly about what the uh, main changes with regards to the final TLDR as well as the... Uh, I've, you'll notice that I've added the constellation comparison in here instead of doing a separate one. So, so this is uh, in a way I'm trying to do like a final update for Albedo. Okay, before we move on to say Shenhe or maybe Ito, Ito update. Because uh, if you guys have followed some of my comments I already mentioned, or some of my previous videos I already mentioned that there was some error with the Ito figures. And there are also new updates that I need to do based on Ito's. There was one round of buff that I did not factor in on my my fear because it wasn't. It was it happened near to the end of the beta. And that's where his base attack and base defense was increased. And on top of that, I also need to update the figures based on this uh, four piece husk getting mad stats just by within twelve seconds of you. Okay, so I'll I'll do like a compilation update for Ito based on that. And in the meantime, I will try to work on Shen, Shenhe and Yunjin videos or math so that at least uh, if I can't if I can't get the Shenhe math ready then I'll do the Ito one because the Ito figures are already updated. Okay, so let's talk about Albedo, the updated summary. So these rotation summaries are now updated. After testing with Goro via the Goro hand, what did I say? <laughs> Over <laughs> Goro handout event. Okay, Goro handout event. Because you can actually uh, try out Goro in combat in his handout event. When you try to. I shouldn't spoil it, so anyway, yeah, you can do that. And along with the 4 piece has off field stacking without dealing Joe damage. So, all of this has been tested. Now, the only thing we couldn't really test was uh, Ito or Goro versus say, bosses. But what we have right now in terms of testing, I think it's pretty good. I'm very comfortable with what we have. So, first off, on pure defense rotation, i.e., you are not using bursts, this will be what I would recommend. Do Goro E, Albedo E, M1. To do the e first e prop for the first two stats, this will take you about one second. Goro e will take you about one second or less than one second if you already have Goro uh, one second character switching cooldown ready. Then you switch to your flat slot to cast the burst of skill, then Goro Q and Ito Q. Now I know this uh, does not maximize the buff for Albedo per se because you are losing out of the 25% defense from Goro Q from using Goro Q. But here's the thing, the 25% def defense buff as well as Goro Q with C2 only lasts for 12 seconds. We want that to be fully ready or fully active during Ito's burst, not for Albedo. So that's why we, we don't switch or we don't do a recast or we don't cast Goro Q first here because it's going to waste too much of Goro's Q's duration. Okay, I hope that is clear. Uh, next, let's talk about hybrid. So hybrid here, we have Goro E, Albedo E, N1 E prop, so pretty much the same thing. The only difference here is that we are going to cast Albedo Burst because it's a hybrid build. We cast Albedo Burst and while his uh, 7 Fatal Blossoms are still uh, blossoming or exploding, just do it N1 or N2 and prop your E prop. This will take you about 2 seconds. 
and then you the rest of it is the same as the pure defense. It's, so it's really the only difference is really just uh, doing an additional action of casting his burst and an M1 or M2 right after doing the elemental skill. C2 is going to be the same because we are focusing on getting as little time as possible here in terms of setup before we go to Itokyo. As for Freedom Zone. Freedom Zone was the one that I really uh, did the testing with the Goro handout. Uh, you can check out the live stream that I did on let's see, 29th November. That is the one where we test out the Goro handout. It's also in the stream title, so you shouldn't miss it. That's the one where we go test out the different permutations. Uh, we tested with Beidou, Fisher, and Rosaria as the uh, flat slot. So essentially, you can afford to cast the Guru E first, cast the flat slot, burst or skill, and slash or skill. Then you go to Albedo E, M1 E proc, it will be able to proc the first reaction for Albedo. And then cast your burst and do the second M1 E proc. And that is sufficient time for you to proc the second reaction for Freedom Swap. I've already tested this. So this is really good because it means that it is a very very optimized setup for his Freedom Swan buff to Ito. But there are some caveats here. So take for example, because we moved the flat slot earlier, it's gonna be 12 seconds of LBD props instead of 14, which means one less albedo proc in this entire rotation. And you're gonna have a reduced duration, I know it's cut off, reduced duration of the flat slot because you're casting it earlier. You notice that I always cast the flat slot later. And there's a reason for that, and I'll talk about that later in the TRDR. But just bear in mind that there's some impact to this by moving your flat slot cast burst of skill earlier for the sake of Freedom Swarm progging. Okay, so these are the rotations. This is actually the most important I want to, the most important things I want to talk about in this video. The rest of it I'm gonna go real fast. We'll just talk about what are the key some of the key changes. Artifact summary, uh, I'm not gonna really go into detail, I'm not even gonna expand the point here. I'm just gonna say this. Previously, I've already done the math and we already talked about 4 piece has being better even without the off field stats being able to stack. And now that the off field stats are able to stack and you can just wait 12 seconds before any challenge, for sure 4 piece has will do even better than 2 piece spectra, 2 piece husk. So just go ahead and farm that, yeah? Okay, let's talk about weapon summary. We're going to do the albedo only damage figures. Uh, generally speaking, the damage figures will be lower now because the do total rotation is shortened out. Instead of 18 seconds, it's 16 seconds with no burst. Instead of 20 seconds with burst, it's now 18 seconds. So the DPS per second is higher while the overall damage figure is lower. So these are the percentage figures. Uh, just I'm just going to show a quick look at them. And you notice that there are only 3 red figures here for PJC R5. Remember, R5. Okay, so from compared to previously, the R5 PJC is only 1% better now compared to previously it was like 2-3% and it's only at talent levels 112-12 versus previously it was at 199 which means that you need C5 albedo at least C5 albedo to get R5 PJC better by 1% so yeah, it, it actually means that with the uh, off-field stacking with waiting for 12 seconds to get mad stacks R5 PJC will lose out even more against CS. Okay? And when you have C6 Goro, there is no scenario where PJC is better. In fact, now the big the difference that is uh, lagging behind CS or Cinnabar Spinder is even bigger because it goes from 1% to 3 to 4%. Okay? Uh rest of this is the same. Okay, constellation and playstyle, I added this in here. I just want to give you guys a quick view, right? When you go from when you're looking at Albedo only. The constellations aren't too bad in a sense. The player style when you switch from no burst to hybrid, you do get about 18% boost yeah, together with C6 Goro. For our rotation, the rotation I talked about here earlier, we will only, we will only get one C2 stack. Okay? Which means that the actual buff on your first rotation from C0 to C2 you only get a 6.6%, which is really bad. Because remember what I said, one constellation typically is about 13 to 20 percent, depending on the character, depending on the constellation. And this is 6.6 percent for two. But 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 it's not the max potential of the C2. 
On the second rotation, you will be able to get 4 C2 stats because each stat lasts 30 seconds. Which means uh, when you go to this uh, from C0 with, with burst to C2 with burst, with full stats, you do get a nice amount of trans concentration improvement, which is like 26.5%. Now, if you look only at this, then it's not too bad because if you divide by 2, each concentration about 13%. Uh, again, remember this is Albedo only, and this is on the second rotation. Now, I'm gonna only going to factor in a 2 rotations to average out here because, in the first place, I don't think you need more than 2 rotations with E2 anyway. So, 6.6% plus 26.5% if I average out is about 15 to 16%. So, 15 to 16% for 2 constellations, still pretty bad. Okay, okay. now I need to go faster. This is Albedo C0 R1 Ito. Now you see here that Freedom Snow R5 do have a scenario where now the figures are read, which means that it's better. Okay, R5 PJC is also marginally, still marginally better, but only at 1%. As long as you don't have Goro. <laughs> so there's a lot of conditions for RJC to be better, and those conditions aren't the best comp for Ito. So, yeah. Basically, PJC does worse now with... Uh, the ability to wait 12 seconds to get mad stats before we start combat. As for the R5 Freedom Swarm, it actually dropped a little from 1 to 5% to 1 to 4%. And remember this just for the first rotation, the buff. And now that we have C0R1 Ito factor in, you start to see that the percentage figures are really, really low. For C0 with burst to C2 with burst, you see that. You only get a 2.3%. Anyway, if you factor in all four C2 stats, it's only a 9.2%. That's C0 R1 E2. Not even talking about C6 R5 E2. But it's important for me to talk about C0 R1 E2 because that's a more likely scenario for people to be using as opposed to C6 R5, which is real territory. And I want to bring your attention to the red figures where you, you go from C0 no burst to C0 with burst, a hybrid play style, from pure defense to hybrid play style, you actually lose DPS. When you factor in Ito's TPS, like us, like I said, those two seconds you spend to cast burst delays your Ito and short and lengthens your entire duration. So your and your DPS per second actually drops when you factor in Ito's high damage. Likewise, C0 no burst to C2 with burst is actually negative if you consider only just the first rotation where we get one C2 stack. Okay, Albedo plus C6 R5 Ito. Now there are some better figures here for Freedom Swan. Because Ito now is doing so much damage that Freedom Zone makes more of a difference. The buff to Ito. This, this is more. This is pretty much in line with uh, what I shared previously. So let's look at the percentage differences. So now R5 PJC's uh, the the percentage that is better is even smaller. Uh, 0 0.2 to 0.4 percent, which is pretty much the same. You might as well just use CS, right? And now with C6 R5 Ito. There's actually no change to this figure, it's still 6-9%. Previously it was also 6-9%, now it's also 6-9%. C6 R5 Ito. With C6 R5 Ito and R5 Freedom Zone, then you get six, a 6-9% six improvement over Cinnabar Spinder, but only for the first rotation. It's crazy how good Cinnabar Spinder is. I mean, especially since we've got a weapon now and we can get to test it out. It is really good. And once I am able, once we once the event unlocks to the point where we are able to get R5 and R5 Spinder, I'll do a video to do the comparison as well. Okay. So constellation play style wise, yeah, you see these figures, you know what I'm talking about, right? Six percent minus six percent minus four point six percent. So you see that it's actually not good to go to buff. Uh, sorry, it's not good when you're using Cinnabar Spinder together with C6 R5 Ito. It's actually not good to go hybrid, you're actually better off doing pure defense. Even if you consider C0 pure defense going to C2 with burst with full max C2 stats, you still do less sir than if you had pure defense. Although it's 0.5%, then Gibson can say that the damage is about the same. But don't, spend, don't forget that you're spending your Primo gems to get two constellations. So, yeah, not that great. Not great at all, I should say. And as for Freedom Swan, uh, now you notice that I strike through those figures that involve any no burst because you should not be using no burst when it comes to Freedom Swan. 
you should be using your burst to get the two reactions. So you see this, I hope this shows that it's not worth it to get your albedo from C0 to C2 even if you want to get freedom swap. Because it's only a 1.2 to 4.8% boost overall. Although that 1.2 to 1.8% is a high figure because you have C6 R5 V2. But still, it's not great, right? Spending so much on primogens just to get this amount of increment. Okay, so let me just go down to the refiner TLDR. Weapon wise, there's literally no change to what I did previously in terms of all the recommendation. Other than R5 PJC is doing even worse now. From 2 to 3, it drops to 1%, and now the instead of talent level 199, C2 with burst, now it's C5 albedo with burst. So even more restrictive for R5 PJC, even worse off. For my recommendation here, from B to E, it's all the same, so I'm not going to talk about them. There is one thing I did not want to talk about previously for uh, Freedom Swarm, the caveat wise, because there were already so many caveats. I kind of missed this, although I had it in my mind. So, basically, what I want to say here is that Freedom Swarm requires your flat sword to cast burst of skill first, which means 15 seconds duration is required in the entire rotation. You need 15 seconds on your flat slot burst or skill in order to match the entire duration of Ito's burst. This requirement is actually tough on most sub DPS characters as the burst of skill duration is usually 12 seconds. And some of them are only 12 seconds after constriction. So for example Rosaria, her burst is 8 seconds duration, with C2 you get 12 seconds. C6 Fisher you get a plus 2 because the base duration of Fisher is 10 seconds, plus 2 makes it 12. Xiangling base duration is 10, with C4 she gets a 40% increment which makes it 14 seconds. So selling slightly better in, the, in this scenario in terms of these 15 seconds. So basically, this will mean loss of crystallized, crystallized reactions in the last 1 to 3 seconds of Beetle Burst. Not a real deal breaker per se, but you just won't get shield, so there is some risk of taking uh, too much damage. But in some cases, you actually lose DPS. So for example, like C6 Fisher, you get the you get to deal additional damage when all is on the field. So with the OS lasting, uh, not not with the with OS expiring before the last one to three seconds of Ito's burst, you will lose DPS in those last one to three seconds. Okay, just to put just to put things in perspective, and with this in view, Raiden is actually pretty good since the duration is twenty five seconds. Uh, but not to worry, once Ito is out, I'll definitely try out different uh flat slots, bus burst and skills to match. Okay. So there's literally nothing else that is different here other than uh, maybe the boost damage figure when it comes to if we factor in the second rotation not having FS buff. Okay. As for the constellation comparison, it's pretty much the same as what I talked about previously, i.e. just skip all his constellations, you are better off going for Ito constellations or Rayhorn. Assuming you are using Albedo in the Ito comp. And Freedom Swarm, same thing. If you don't have R5 Freedom Swarm, you see R5 Ito, don't bother with Freedom Swarm. The only thing now I want to talk about is that, if, if you remember what I talked about when I showed the uh, Albedo only figures, you have then 6.5% when it's 4 C2 stats with the max rotation and 6% when it's only one rotation. So if I average out, it's about 15 to 16%, and that is higher than the previous 11% average. Okay? But just just remember, just bear in mind, how, if you're using someone like Ito, who has who really has a very high damage, right? You're not going to go beyond two rotations. So average of 15% is pretty accurate in this case. All right, so this, 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 I hope this has been a nice and quick video, quick enough anyway to really quickly summarize what are the changes in particular the rotation because now that we can just wait 12 seconds off you i wanted to share updated rotation so that's helpful to you guys okay this is what in my opinion after testing we go to hand out and after trying out the four piece husk, this is what i think is good but without actually trying ito out together with the flat slot to really test out the entire duration uh, I can't say for sure it's the 100% best, but uh, maybe it's something like 70 plus to 80% that this is this is pretty good right now. This is something that should work for you to call. Okay. 
So I hope this is helpful to you guys. If you like the content, remember the video and click subscribe for more. Thanks everyone for watching. Bye.